my gosh. How is this possible? All right, you guys, so we are back for part two. If y'all have not seen part one, which is tagged right here, go and watch it first. I'm not even gonna do the intro. We are jumping right back in to this spooky true story. Make sure you watch part one first. Are you guys ready? You remember where we left off? <laughs> We left off where Adam was showing us this little opening. It looks like an attic entrance in his duplex slash apartment, two-story apartment, but the attic or whatever entry thing is right over the stairwell where you cannot reach it. It's in the strangest spot. We ready? You got your lights turned on? Okay, here we go. So Adam says, first the skylight is flat with the roof. I checked Google Earth to make sure. The hatch is about three feet below the skylight, meaning there's about three feet of empty space between the two openings. So you guys see the skylights up there and then there's that little dip down and then there's that hatch that is in the craziest spot that makes no sense. So there's three feet of empty space above his head for what? The only way to get in there is that entryway because he lives in the top apartment and there's a hallway. The only way to get in there is over the stairwell, which is like what, 15 feet? We'll see. I think maybe the hatch leads to a short ladder going to the roof. But even if that's the case, the hatch is level with all the ceilings in my apartment. That means that there's three feet of empty space all over my apartment. You see the photo, guys? I was ready to explain this away for a few reasons. One, it might just be some sort of insulated space that all residential buildings have. I'm not an architect, so what do I know? It didn't seem relevant enough at the time, so I decided I wasn't going to mention it here. But over the past week and a half, I've been hearing more things above me. A few days after the first sound, I heard a similar thump while I was in the kitchen. Then last night, I heard something small clink to the floor and roll about six feet before stopping. Something is going on up there. Maybe it's a raccoon, but maybe it's not. I also can't get over the fact that the hatch is in such a weird, inaccessible place over the stairs. I need to investigate. I'm just not sure right now. That's the part that bothers me. Like, why is that hatch right there? That does not make any sense. I guess I'll try to buy a long pole off of Amazon to see if the hatch even moves. I might have to buy a construction ladder at any rate. That's why I've been MIA for a minute. I'll keep you posted when I figure out how to get up there. Okay, I bought a pole. If the hatch is movable, I'll either shell out for a ladder or I'll call my landlord to investigate. And then Adam updates on November 28th. A lot has happened in the last week, but I was away for Thanksgiving, so I'm just now able to write. The noises from the ceiling haven't let up, but the pole I ordered didn't arrive before I had to leave for the holiday, so I didn't actually get it until late Friday night, and I planned to investigate the next morning and I went to bed. I'd barely fallen asleep when I woke up to an incredibly loud crash above me. It sounded like someone had dropped a bowling ball. I bolted upright in my bed, immediately felt strange. There was a weird energy all around me. I can't explain. Oh my, well, if y'all could see my arms. Oh, After about a minute, I heard another crash. I briefly thought about grabbing my shoes and booking it, but that would mean passing under the hatch. And that seemed like a bad idea. So instead, I just listened and waited, though I'm not sure for what. The crash happened again, and then again, probably 15 times in a row, followed by a long silence. Then I heard a smaller, creaky sound from the hallway. And in my mind, I registered it as footsteps, but it really could have been anything. I stayed still, but there were no more sounds after that. I lay back down, 
still tense and nervous, but I must have fallen asleep at some point because I woke up the next morning and everything seemed normal again. I got dressed and I left to go get a bagel, same as every Saturday. As I made my way downstairs, something crunched under my feet. I looked down and noticed a pile of debris on the stairs directly under the hatch. What? Do you guys see this? There is like black debris that has come out of that hatch, that attic thing. How? Oh my gosh. Oh my goodness. It looked like dirt, but I couldn't tell for certain. It could have been an old plaster or something. I glanced up at the hatch and I noticed something else peculiar. The edge of something was caught in it, barely poking out. It's hard to see because it's so far up, but I took a photo. At that point, bagels were the last thing on my mind and I went back upstairs, grabbed the pole, I set my camera on the coat wardrobe at the top of the stairs and I hit record just to make sure it would be caught on video if a demon burst out the hatch. I can't, I cannot. Now y'all tell me how he got that up there to make this a joke. Like, right, tell me how he could have faked that. How he could have gotten that up there. Oh my gosh, it fell out too easy. I jumped out of the way and practically fell down the stairs trying to dodge whatever it was that fell. At first, I thought it was a dead squirrel, which would have honestly explained a lot. It hit the steps and bounced down to the first floor. I went upstairs to get my phone and collapsed the pole, then went back downstairs to investigate the object that fell. At first, I wasn't even sure what it was. It was dingy and faded black. I picked it up and realized what it was. It was a small leather shoe. Oh my gosh, you guys, I'm gonna cry, freak out, like, oh, you can't, oh my gosh, you can't make this up. How, how, how? I hustled back upstairs and I texted my landlord. I told him that I thought that there was something in the crawl space and I asked if he could investigate. He said he'd come by later with a ladder and check it out. A few hours later, my landlord was on a ladder, shining a flashlight into the crawl space. I stared up at him, half expecting something to grab him and yank him into the darkness. He angled his flashlight all around and finally saying, there's nothing up here. But then he was like, oh wait. I watched as he reached up in to the emptiness y'all with his free arm and when he pulled it back he had something small and round in his hand he climbed down the ladder and he handed it to me again i wasn't quite sure what i was looking at it was smooth and shiny at first thought that it was an old piece of candy but it was cold and too heavy to be candy and after a second i realized it was a marble it was so worn that it hadn't registered as a marble at first its shape was sort of weird with a little bump on the end. You guys, look at this. Can you see the goosebumps on my arms? My landlord seemed unbothered for the most part uh, okay, dude. And he told me to call him if I heard anything else. I went inside and headed to my office to see if I could figure anything out about this marble that somehow made its way into my ceiling. I had nothing to go on and in short, I didn't really learn much, but I did figure out the bump on the marble. I think apparently in the early 1900s, they made marbles by hand and cut them with big metal scissors, which would mean the marble is probably really old. Anyways, now I have a decrepit old shoe and a marble sitting on my dresser. I guess this is the new normal. So after a few weeks, then Adam posted a new update and he said, sorry for the long break. Adam, you can't be stressing us out. Okay. We don't got a couple weeks. We're over here losing our ever loving minds. Like, are you okay, Adam? Have you fallen and you can't get up? Adam, 
Adam, sorry for the long break. I haven't been feeling great the past couple weeks and haven't had time to update. There also wasn't much to say for the most part. I wasn't sleeping well and I was having weird dreams, but they were vague and hard to describe. I'm sleepy all day long and I've been getting sudden bouts of dizziness. I chalked it up to always having earbuds crammed in and made a mental note to get my ears checked. Other than that, things were pretty quiet and I sort of fooled myself into thinking that finally Finding those items in the attic somehow ended all of this. Not that that would make much sense. But last week, something started to happen. Late on Wednesday, I woke up with a start and felt something strange. Like something had just been watching me. I turned on the light, but I was alone. Still, there was this tangible feeling of badness. Everything felt wrong. Sort of like when you have the flu and you wake up at night and you can't really tell where you are for a minute. It was a feeling I'm used to. It always accompanies David. People tweet me a lot saying that he might just need help, but I'm certain that's not the case. Every time he shows up, I feel a palpable sense of malice. Y'all know that feeling. You know that feeling when you're in the presence of evil. That's what I felt that night. Malice. Dread. But I was alone and I was so tired. I wound up going back to sleep. I've been so exhausted recently I could barely function. The next night the same thing happened and I woke up suddenly feeling like I had missed seeing something. Like a candle that had just gone out and you could still smell it. I thought about using the pet cam from the living room to monitor my bedroom while I slept but the cord was too short to get the camera high enough to see the entire room so I improvised. I downloaded an app that takes a photo every 60 seconds. And I set my phone at the top of the bookcase. This is almost seven feet tall. So it had a pretty good view of my bed and the surrounding room. Then I went to sleep. Just like before, I jolted awake hours later, feeling the same unease. I turned on the light and hurried out of bed to get my phone from the bookcase. There were probably 350 photos to scroll through. The vast majority of them were me sleeping in an empty room. It's sort of dark, but you can see me sleeping. I'd left a couple night lights on just in case anything showed up, but for the first hundred or so photos, it was just me in an empty room. Then suddenly he was there. Standing on the chair at the foot of the bed, staring at me. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I can't. In the next photo, from a minute later, he seems to be staring straight up at the ceiling. Just staring. Then he appears to collapse on the chair. The next dozen photos are all the same. He's completely lifeless. At first I thought he was dead, which obviously doesn't make sense. I looked over at the chair, half expecting him to still be there, but it was empty. But then in the next photo, he's gone. The room is totally empty again. He's gone in the next several photos too, and I figured maybe that was it, but I kept swiping through the photos. About 15 photos later, he was back. Standing next to the bed, it was just like the last time I saw him. This is when my heart started to race. I didn't want to look at the rest of the photos, but I knew I had to. I swiped to the next photo and my heart sank to my stomach. He was on the bed inches from me, staring down at me, sleeping. The next one was worse. In the next photo, he was staring right at the camera. Oh my gosh. Ooh. After that, there's seemingly nothing. He disappears again and the rest of the scroll is just me alone in the room. That is until the last photo. Here's the final photo on the scroll. I'm at a loss for words. That malformed ear, that stringy hair, I didn't even know what to think. I looked all over my room, but I couldn't find anything. And honestly, I've been so exhausted, I didn't know how to process it. Even now, all I want to do is just go to sleep. And then Adam tweets again on December 20th. Oh my gosh, I need a break. I gotta breathe through this, y'all. 
Oh, so this is right before Christmas. Hey everyone, I'll be gone for the next week visiting family back home in Montana for the holidays. It'll be a nice getaway from all of this for a bit. Thanks for everyone's kind words lately. I'll see you when you get back. Now listen, I know a lot of y'all are thinking, okay, come on. He would have been gone. He would have moved out. But you guys got to understand, we hear time and time again, stories over stories over years where people don't leave for whatever reason. Not everybody's like me and you, right? I'd be gone. Okay, I would be gone. <laughs> I would be standing on the side of the street with a cup and a sign, help me, okay? Anything other than sleeping back in that apartment slash house slash duplex. But not everybody's like that. There's people right here that's watching this right now that's like, ooh, cool. I would have stayed there, not me, okay? There's people on YouTube that film themselves going to haunted mansions or whatever and sleeping in them, not me. I ain't one of them, okay? We can talk about it, but I ain't it. So if some of y'all are thinking, why would he do that? Some people are like that. Some of y'all are like that. Y'all just gonna have to write a story and tell me about it because I'm not gonna be there. I'll cook you something to eat when you get back, but honey, you go on by yourself. I'll drop you off and pick you up, but I won't be there. Okay, so then when he comes back, a spooky update on January 2nd. So I've been away from the city for a couple weeks. I went home to Montana for the holidays and almost immediately started to feel better. Less tired, less foggy, up until now, I haven't really entertained the thought of moving, thinking that David would just probably follow me wherever I go. But when I left for Montana, everything seemed to improve. Like maybe David wouldn't follow me after all. Maybe he was tied to the house, not me. Being home felt safer and I managed to relax a little bit. I even started browsing listings for new apartments back in New York and the last thing I wanted to do is move in the middle of winter, but after the past few months, it seemed like it might be worth it. It felt like there might be a way out. But after a few days, I started to feel strange again. One night I got up to go to the bathroom and as I stood there in the dark, I couldn't help feeling like there was something moving outside of the bathroom window. <laughs> I can't take this. What do you gotta do? What do you gotta do? The bathroom looks out to the backyard and it was pitch black. I could barely see anything, but it's Montana and there are animals passing through all the time. Sure enough, in the morning, I found animal tracks through the snow. I don't know the specific animal. The next night, the same thing happened. I got up in the middle of the night and I thought I saw movement in the blackness outside, but this time I stood at the window and gazed out, straining my eyes to see, waiting for them to adjust to the night. For a long time, I stared out into the snowy darkness, but I couldn't see any movement. Then, just as I was about to turn away, I saw something lurch off to the right and disappear from view. Again, it was too dark to make out the animal, but it could have been anything, maybe a coyote or something. In the morning, as I was getting out of the shower, I glanced out the window and I noticed tracks behind the garage. I couldn't tell what they were from the bathroom, so I got dressed, put on my coat, and went outside. When I got up close, my heart practically stopped. They weren't tracks, they were footprints. Really small footprints. I followed them across the backyard, but they disappeared into the ditch out back. I stood there in the snow, not knowing what to do. What could I do? Call the cops and tell them I found footprints in the snow? The last couple of nights, I was too scared to leave my room. If it had been David out there in the snow, it meant that he could follow me anywhere. No matter where I moved, he could find me. I felt helpless. I flew back to New York the day after Christmas, back in my apartment. It seemed like I was at square one yet again. I tried everything that I could think of. I've saged my apartment. I've hired a medium. Nothing has worked. And worse, I still feel him at night. I don't know how you sleep in Adam. I can't, okay? I cannot. If the wind blows in a bat, I'm up. And you're in there trying to sleep, sir? Oh my gosh, you needed a friend. Not to stay with you though. Don't call me because I'm not that friend, but you can come to, I don't know. Y'all letting Adam come stay at your house and bring dear David with him? Adam, we're going to have to FaceTime, okay? Because I can't. I can't do this. At worst, I still feel him at night watching me from different corners of my room, always getting closer and waking up right before something happens. Last night was particularly bad. 
I felt sick and had nightmares all night. I dreamed that David was hovering in the corner by the ceiling, far off of the ground. He was mouthing something, but I could not hear any words. Then he was hovering over my bed, staring down at me. His mouth was moving faster than it should be. I couldn't move. I could only look up at him. Suddenly he plummeted downward and I felt this huge pressure crash onto my chest. I woke up gasping. The wind completely knocked out of me. I sat up. I looked around frantically, heaving for air, but there was nothing. When I caught my breath, I retrieved my phone from the dresser. The photo roll showed nothing of note for the last photo taken just a moment before. I'm about to be sick. I'm about to be sick. I can't. This is not. Oh my goodness. I don't know what to do. I'm at a loss here. I just don't know. Then on January 16th, we got a really strange update from Adam. And you can imagine people are freaking out. They're like, where is he? he okay that was been almost two weeks actually two weeks before anybody heard from him again sorry for the long delay honestly i wasn't sure i was going to tweet again after what happened a couple weeks ago everything stopped well sort of i wasn't having dreams anymore and i was feeling better i was sleeping through the night again and actually i was feeling great it's hard to explain i'll try but i don't know if any of it makes sense Basically, as good as things have been for the past couple weeks, I can't shake this feeling that something is off. Like I've been sleeping fine and I have lots of energy during the day, but sometimes I seem to sort of lose time, I guess. Like I'll look up at the clock and realize a whole hour has gone by and I don't remember any of it. Or I'll mishear someone and ask them to repeat what they said, but they'll say they didn't say anything. Little stuff like that. But after what I've been through, it's not a big deal. Despite all of that, I felt ready to put it all behind me. So on Sunday, I opened Twitter intending to update you all that it was over, or at least I thought so. I just want things to go back to the way that they were, and it seemed like they had. I was writing something to that effect when I noticed I had way more notifications than usual. I swiped to my mentions and I saw that everyone was tweeting to me about something I had posted on my Instagram story the day before, saying they saw something weird. The stories are expired now, but I have the screenshots and I don't know how to explain it. Long story short, I went to brunch on Saturday with a friend. I posted a few photos to my story and they were fairly unremarkable. Here's the first two I posted totally dumb and normal. And then Adam says, they're totally boring brunch photos. I posted one more of me and my friend before leaving and that was that. But the next day I had a zillion messages about the third photo I had posted. People had taken screenshots and sent them to me. This is what somehow got uploaded to my Instagram story. Mm, mm, mm. Woo, Jesus. I have no clue what happened. It looked perfectly fine on my phone when I uploaded it. I'd say it was just a glitch, but I can't make sense of what's happening with my face. See, that's the issue. So many people, they wanna to try to find, you know, a reason other than what it is. Oh, maybe I can. I know what it looks like, what it probably is but I don't know if I care anymore. I really just want things to be normal again and things feel normal enough right now. I don't know. I guess I'll keep you updated if something else happens. So then it goes on like a couple more weeks and then Adam posts a strange video on January 28th. a video of his cat you guys do y'all want to hear something creepy and strange so after i finished filming the dear david part one and part two for you guys when i took the footage to look at it at the end of part two starting at around february 3rd 
the audio was super weird and messed up, like unrecognizably weird. And this has never happened before in any of my filming in five years that I've been doing YouTube. So it really creeped me out. But I'm gonna say, just like Adam Ellis said, you know, there's probably a very logical explanation for what happened. It just happened to have happened while filming this video and it's kind of creepy and it was a weird sound. It was just bizarre. So I'm gonna pick up here on February 3rd and finish this off with you guys and see if we can get it completed. So on February 3rd, Adam had another weird update. And in this update, he just said, everything is fine. No big elaboration, just everything is fine. That's because people kept asking. They were in the comment section like, where are you? Are you okay? And he just wrote, everything is fine. Fine. Now moving on to February 6th, which is just three days later, Adam gave more of a personal update. And in this one, he said, some of you already know this, but I thought that I should make a short update on Twitter about it. A little over the month ago, I made the difficult decision to leave my full-time job after four years with the company. He goes on to say that it wasn't an easy choice, but it just became too difficult to focus on everything and that he decided that it was time to turn his attention towards personal projects. He said that he was nervous about what the future holds, but that he felt good and he knew that big things were coming. Now on February 14th, which was Valentine's Day, another like strange or bizarre tweet came from Adam and it said, please don't worry about me. I'm okay and everything will be as it was before with a smiley face. Like you guys, that is just creepy. Like please don't worry about me, I'm okay. Everything will be as it was before, like, what? And then he posted a video of his precious cat, basically trying to warn him at this point, like there is something on the other side of this door, you guys know where the hatch is, and he films it and he posts it on Twitter. Then on March 12th, which is quite a distance after February 14th, Adam made a post that was seemingly normal. And in this one, he said, for everyone asking if I'm alive, I'm doing okay. It's been pretty quiet around here lately and I've been trying to focus on work. Of course, I'll keep you updated if anything strange happens. But for now, I'm staying busy with drawing and other projects, which seems strange to everybody. Like, how can you just go from, and it almost seemed like, I think to people that like he was just becoming complacent with all of the weirdness going on like the cat meowing and the shadow or the the ghost standing over him looking at him or the spirit or the demon or whatever it was or you know people were concerned and then you know every now and then he pops in he's like i'm fine i'm drawing and people are like okay this is weird on june 6th his weirdness seemed to have made sense to some people because he posted this photo right here and said dear david news dan lynn producer of it will be producing a dear david film with screenwriter mike van ways writing of the conjuring spinoff the crooked man attached now i know it's either the conjuring or the conjuring whichever one it is 
sometimes I get it right, sometimes I get it wrong, but you guys know what I'm talking about. And I'm gonna do some videos on that whole series one day because the Warrens, if you guys don't know that story, the Conjurings are based on true events from the Warrens. If you guys don't know who Ed and Lorraine Warren are, they were, in my opinion, from what I know of them, obviously I didn't know them personal, incredible people. They documented so much. I mean, they have videos, they have pictures. And so their mission was all faith-based, you know, to be doing the Lord's work. And because of it, they documented a lot and they have a lot of proof. Now, of course, there's always going to be skeptics and that's totally fine. That's what makes these types of stories fun, in my opinion. Some people believe them, some people don't. Da, 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 da. But the Warrens, who these movies were made around, and Annabelle too, you guys know Annabelle? If you guys have never watched that movie, that is based on a true story of a real doll. And the Warrens had this doll. And that's why those movies to me are probably my favorite scary movies because they are real. And to me, it's like watching history. Nevertheless, the people that directed it and The Conjurings are gonna be directing the Dear David film. Now, this is where people are saying, oh, he was just trying to get a movie script or da 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 da. Or other people are saying, no, he had a certain amount of proof, which is why they picked this up. But I guess we'll have to wait and see. Now, I have a friend who feels like she's seen Dear David before while she was researching this case. And I saw online that other people believe that they've seen him too. Moving on to the final update on November 17th of 2021. And this is where Adam posts the photo. Well, it took a little while to get here, but the Dear David movie is finally in production. And that was the end of that. So what do you guys think? Have you heard about the Dear David situation? Have you seen any spooky or crazy things? I, I know I have for sure. We're going to be talking about another ghost, real life, scary thing, hallucinating video here very soon. And this is going to be one of my favorites because this is true. And this is terrifying. Okay. So make sure you guys like, subscribe, hit the notification bell so you don't miss any more videos. Thank you guys so much for being here. What do you guys think about spooky season? Are you enjoying it? I can't wait to read y'all's comments down below. I love you guys and thanks again for being here. Bye.